I'm going to take a look at how the central limit theorem applies to the concept of sample proportion. In the last video, I looked at how it applies to sample means. Those would be for quantitative variables. Now we're looking at qualitative variables. So this would be like the number of observations of a certain characteristic divided by the total number of observations. That's a sample proportion. You could think of it like what percent of a number of candies that we find are orange. Like in this one, this is a Rossman chance applet for Reese's Pieces. We're going to look at orange candies. So let's say 40% of them are orange and we start drawing samples. I'm going to start with a sample of 25 candies. We can see this little animation. Um, we're going to end up with about 40%, but we'll have some variation of that. So in this one, I actually had, um, it was quite a bit higher. It was um, above 50% there. Um, let's just take a look at, if we draw some samples, what we get. Oh, I don't need the animation. So these are our proportion of orange candies kind of stacking up here. And let's go ahead and just draw 10,000 to get a whole bunch real quick. So you can see there's that bell curve. And when we were talking about binomial probability, we kind of noticed that bell curve already. And so we're just jumping off from that concept. So what we get with the central limit theorem is as long as we meet these requirements. Now, this first requirement is going to usually mean that we'll need more than 40 um, candies or no, more than 40 for our sample size. So let me reset this and go to 40. Um, here that one's going to be a little bit better of a bell curve and what we see with our stats here is we have a mean of basically 40 percent a little bit off of it and then we have this standard deviation central limit theorem tells us exactly how to calculate that and we typically call it standard error when it refers to a sampling distribution. So this represents all of the possible proportions of orange candies when we have samples of 40. From there, we can actually use a normal probability calculator to calculate probabilities. So I would just need to use um, the original proportion that was 40% and then I would need to calculate the standard error. So for mine, that's going to be square root of 0.4 times 1 minus 0.4, that's 0.6, divided by n. Um, let me just divide this whole thing. It really honestly doesn't make a huge difference because of the order of operations. Um, and then I'll divide by n, and over here I was doing samples of 40. So my standard error is about 0.077. And we got that standard deviation right there. So from there, I can type those numbers into the Desmos calculator. The population proportion is 0.4. Um, I can either just copy and paste this, or you know, it's better not to use a rounded number, so I'll copy and paste there. Let's reformat that. And so we see most of the time we'll end up with a sample with 40% orange candies. We'll have some variation of that. You know, if we had a sample with 20% orange, that'd be pretty low. 60% orange would be pretty high. And then we can calculate exact probabilities in here. So the, the probability of having a sample of 40 candies that is less than 30% orange would be about 10%. We can do all of the probabilities that we did with Desmos. So the main thing is just knowing what parameters to put. We have a population proportion for our mean, and then we have this standard error. The same thing goes for Staplet. You can calculate any kind of probability using that normal calculator. So I'm going to do 0 0.077, just round it off for my standard error. And then my mean is my population proportion. So 40% of the population's orange, and this is going to be the variation I see for samples of 40. So for example, probability of being less than 30%. Um, oh, I'd want to go to the left of 0.3. Is that almost 10% probability?